Can the good brothers Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson bridge the gap between Impact Wrestling and New Japan Pro Wrestling? Eddie Edwards, the new Impact Wrestling World Heavyweight Champion, promises to defend the title every week. Dave Meltzer and his silly Slammiversary star ratings. Where is Jackson Stone? And uh, another really silly comments. All this and more coming up next on Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin right here on the Impact Lounge. Hey folks, thanks for joining me today. I'm Lewis Carlin. This is Shooting Up North. So the good brothers, Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows, as we know, they will be, if they haven't already signed, but they will be signing with the New Japan Pro Wrestling as, a, as another promotion for them to work with. And as we know, they have a two-year deal with Impact Wrestling. Uh, so my question, my question is, could Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson actually bridge the gap between Impact Wrestling and New Japan Pro Wrestling, uh, you know, there's been bad blood over the years at the way at the way Impact Wrestling handled uh, Kazuchika Okada uh, and some of the other wrestlers, I believe Sonata as well. So there's, it's mainly Kazuchika Okada uh, that New Japan Pro Wrestling was upset about. I I don't think they're still upset. You know, we got we got different owners now. Um, Don Callis, who was was a commentator um, recently, up until recently for New Japan Pro Wrestling, uh, he was on good terms with them. Um, Scott Demore, different management now, so it's 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 a different situation in Impact Wrestling. So I honestly don't believe, and I know a lot of people disagree with me, but I honestly don't believe that New Japan Pro Wrestling is so angry at Impact Wrestling anymore. Uh, but nonetheless, nonetheless, uh, I'm sure there are some fences that need to need to be mended there. And um, could the Good Brothers do it? Could the Good Brothers do it? I, I'm kind of hoping. I'm kind of hoping they're able to, to to mend some fences there for Impact Wrestling, and um, get into some sort of working agreement uh, with New Japan Pro Wrestling. I'm I'm not saying I'm not saying that it's going to be a full fledged working agreement right off the bat because uh, I I know who New, New Japan Pro Wrestling there they have an agreement with uh, Ring of Honor. I don't know how long that agreement is for or if it's going to expire anytime soon or, or if it could just end uh, whenever um, New Japan Pro Wrestling wants to end it. I don't know the details of that, of that agreement. Uh, but nonetheless, it, it doesn't have to be a full-fledged working agreement right off the bat between New Japan Pro Wrestling and Impact Wrestling. I don't think, you know, I, I, I don't think it would start like that. My my suggestion would be this. You know, New Japan Pro Wrestling, we, they got the, the U, U.S. Dojo uh, here in, uh, I believe it's in Los Angeles, the California area, um, run by Shibata. So I'm thinking, you know, you know, Render Rita right now is uh, a young lion, and he's on excursion in the U.S., uh, and he was wrestling on a lot of independent shows before the COVID-19 pandemic hit and canceled um, all the shows, basically. Uh, so he doesn't seem to have a, a, a promotion that he's, he's set with. I know when Jay White uh, was on excursion and he came to the U.S., you know, his home promotion was Ring of Honor. Renner Reed doesn't, doesn't seem to have that. He's, they seem to be bouncing him around, like I said, to, uh, to different, uh, to different uh, independent promotions. Why not? Why not make Impact Wrestling the home promotion for New Japan Pro Wrestling Young Lions? Why, why, why not? Remember, because right now, Render Rita needs to work, you know, and, and he really can't work. Well, the shows are starting to come back now, so I'm sure he'll get back to get back to his excursion uh, matches soon. But why not make why not make Impact Wrestling the Young Lion promotion for New Japan Pro Wrestling in in the United States? I know they have uh, they have um, promotions in Mexico and promotions in the UK that they use, but why not make why not make Impact Wrestling? The U.S. I mean, it doesn't have the, the like I said. It's not going to be a full-fledged working agreement. Uh, they still have that with Ring of Honor, uh, so that could work. That could work. I mean, instead of sending Render Rita out to different various uh, independent promotions, send it to Impact Wrestling. Stick them in the X Division and uh, see what he can do. And of course, of course, you know, if they're thinking about you know giving him a a character, my suggestion. <laughs> My suggestion to Scott Demore and Don Callis would be to give New Japan Pro Wrestling a phone call and 
clear that character with them first before they before they would give someone like a Renderita uh, or a um, they have uh, wrestlers in the in the uh, LA Dojo or Gabriel Kidd uh, among others uh, before they give them a, a persona just let them let let New Japan Pro Wrestling clear it I think that's a smart thing to do a lot of talent there's a lot of good young talent and I don't know if New Japan wants to keep you know, flying them back and forth to to Japan to, to, have, to have, let them have the matches. I mean, you got you got guys like um, I, I mentioned Gabriel Kidd. You got Alec Coughlin. You got Clark Connors. Uh, you have some really really good talent. And also in Japan, uh, when they're ready to go on excursion, you got uh, Yota Shuji and uh, Yuya Umura, uh, who are just tremendous tremendous young talents. And they're gonna need they're gonna need a promotion to go to. They're gonna need the place to go to for excursion. And and why not? I mean, why not? Now, why could 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 Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows convince New Japan Pro Wrestling to give Impact Wrestling another shot? I think they could. I think they could. I mean, there are a lot of great things happening right now uh, in Impact Wrestling. As we can see, that the talent is the they just the talent is incredible right now. They just brought in all that new tremendous talent, and it's it's a really good time. The management is fantastic. It's it's a growing company, and Ring of Honor is not running shows right now so i mean they can't send uh like if when, when the matches um slowly start up again you know ring of honor they're not running any shows i mean impact wrestling has been running shows throughout the pandemic give impact wrestling a shot and and if that works out we could you know you know take baby steps if that works out then we could try something else maybe we could send you know one or two talents like we could send a uh, Tomohiro Ishii or um, or a Toru Yanu or um, or a Hiromu Takahashi uh, to to Impact Wrestling to have a series of matches and you could start that way and slowly build yourself up to a full fledged working agreement. I think it could work out. I'd like to see it. You know, I'd, I'd love to see it. A Ring of Honor is is on a decline right now. Yes, they just signed Marty Skrull, and uh, but they haven't been running matches as I said, and they're 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 not on the upswing like Impact Wrestling is right now. And, and people say, oh, wait a minute, Lewis. Wait a minute. You're forgetting about All Elite Wrestling. You're forgetting about, oh, AEW. They're going to have the working agreement with New Japan. Well, be, before we you know, before we get into that, you know, before we start, um, you know, you know m- m- <laughs> before we have All Elite Wrestling and New Japan Pro Wrestling walking down the aisle together, um, I, I do believe that the bad blood between Kenny Omega and... And the Young Bucks and New Japan Pro Wrestling is a lot fresher than any bad blood that may remain between New Japan Pro Wrestling and Impact Wrestling over Kazuchika Okada. So I, I think there's a lot of bad blood between New Japan Pro Wrestling, a lot of newer, fresher bad blood between All Elite Wrestling and New Japan Pro Wrestling than than um, Impact Wrestling and New Japan Pro Wrestling has. So so that that's the issue there. So let's not get any, let's not stop having them uh, marriage up just yet because I don't think that's going to happen. So that's why Impact Wrestling is in a great position right now, in a great position to hopefully get back into a working agreement with New Japan Pro Wrestling. And I hope it happens. I hope it happens. Can it happen? Of course it could happen. I think it could happen. Uh, is it likely? Anything, Anything's likely. It's professional wrestling. And the good brothers can be good brothers. They're offering that initial olive branch Initial. I, I I wouldn't say initial. I'm I'm sure uh, Impact Wrestling has tried to raise, but they they could they could offer an olive branch, and uh, hopefully we could see some sort of a work agreement between New Japan Pro Wrestling and Impact Wrestling in the near future. So Eddie Edwards, the new Impact Wrestling World Heavyweight Champion, promises promises to defend the title every week. And I, I believe, and BQ, you know, believes the same thing. I was talking to about it, talking to him about it before. Uh, this is in response to Cody Rhodes defending the TNT, TNT title uh, every week. So hey, but, but this is great. There's nothing wrong. It's it's not an open challenge. I know Cody Rhodes is an open challenge. Eddie Edwards hasn't open hasn't issued an open challenge. This is just he promises to defend the title every week. So so how could Impact Wrestling go about this? Uh, I know the first match is against. Uh, Trey Miguel, Eddie Edwards just happened to walk into Trey Miguel in the back, and Trey Miguel 
you know, sh- shot his mouth off, and and boom, he gets a title shot. Uh, so so that's the first um, first title uh, defense for Eddie Edwards against Trey Miguel. So how 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 could they you know, do this week after week and make it interesting? Uh, I I don't think Eddie Edwards is going to just happen to accidentally bump into someone in the back and they're going to run their mouth off, and then and the next week we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna have a title shot. Uh, but what I think they could do, and I was thinking about this, what they could do, and I think this is very interesting. They could actually, uh, every week, have a random match. And by random, I I mean by pulling two names out of a hat or two names out of a bag. And the two names that are pulled out of the bag, they have a match. And the winner of that match gets a shot at Eddie Edwards the following week. I think that's I think that's fantastic. I think that's that'll make it very interesting, and it could be anybody. Uh, it could be uh, anyone, any ev- anybody, and everybody is eligible. And even if they want to say, yo, people in other promotions, uh, and, and independent promotions are available. Wrestlers that are in um, partner independent promotions could be available as well. So that could make it really interesting, and that which that would really give us. You know, we would really get to see some new, fresh talent if they did that. I think that that could work. And if the winner, they get a title shot. And if they lose the match, they lose the match, but their name gets put back in and they can get another opportunity. So say uh, Man Man Fulton, he defeats, um, say he defeats uh, Trey Miguel. You know, Trey Miguel and, and the next night's man, next week is Man Man Fulton against Eddie Edwards. Eddie Edwards wins, but it just squeaks out. And then the following week, Madman Fulton, his name gets put back into the bag, and he could, he could have another opportunity. He could have another opportunity to get a shot at Eddie Edwards. I think that would be make it very, very, very interesting. I would be all for that. I would, I would. That would be very interesting to me. I don't know how other people feel about that, but I, I think that could work, and um, I think it's a good idea. And. W- I don't know if they're gonna, I don't know if they're going to do that. I don't know how they're going to determine how uh, Eddie Edwards uh, or who Eddie Edwards is going to defend his title against every week. I know I know he's got a thing with Eric Young, so kind of expecting kind of expecting uh, a match between him and Eric Young. I'm sure Eric Young's going to get involved in the match next week, or he'll, uh, he'll do a post match attack on uh, Eddie Edwards that will lead up to a match. Uh, that match could be at uh, Bound for Glory. I, I don't know, but. Um, but I one thing another thing I'm, I'm a, I was a little worried about on why they're doing this is maybe maybe Eddie Edwards is just a transitional champion and they're doing this because he's going to get attacked by Eric Young and Eric Young is gonna you know may break his leg or break his arm or something and uh, Eddie Edwards is gonna you know to to to. <laughs> <laughs> to stay true to what he's promised, he, with the broken arm or the broken leg, he's going to defend the title uh, that week, and it's just going to happen to be someone like Eric Young, and because of the broken leg or the broken arm, uh, he's going to lose the title uh, to to whoever he's up against. Uh, so I think that that could be another reason why they're promising to have him defended every week. I hope it's not like that. I hope he's not a transitional champion. Uh, I. I I honestly be- believe that Michael Elgin was supposed to be the champion, uh, so I don't, I don't know. But uh, I, I kind of like the idea of pulling the names out of the hat and have the match every week, and uh, the winner of that match gets a title shot the following week. I, I, I really like that idea, and um, I, I hope, uh, I hope they take my advice. <laughs> That's all I could say on that. That's all I could say on that. So Slam Anniversary, Slam Anniversary actually smashed. So many social media records for for Impact Wrestling. I'm just gonna read. I'm just gonna read um, from an article here. Uh, so it says on Twitter, Slammiversary 2020 smashed Impact Wrestling's record for single day total impressions, uh, nearly doubling the previous record by 97 percent. Wow, that's that's amazing. Leading the day was the exclusive midnight video announcement of the Good Brothers, which quickly became Impact's best performing tweet of all time. With tweets showcasing Motor City Machine Guns, uh, the return of them, and Perazzo's, uh, Deano Perazzo's title win, uh, now ranked as their fifth and sixth best, respectively. That's that's fantastic. Fanta- and Instagram. Instagram engagement for Slammiversary 2020 saw 172 percent increase in single day total likes compared to the previous record which was hard to kill 2020 as video posts about eric young's return and heath's debut grew 
into Impact's top two most liked posts ever. During the month, I mean, I, that's that's fantastic. That's fantastic. And during the month leading up to Slammiversary 2020, Impact's YouTube channel saw its total viewer views rise by 26.5% and total watch time grow by 32%. The channel, which already ranks as the number two most subscribed wrestling account on the platform, added over 100,000 new subscribers, making it a 20% rise in its monthly subscriber rate. That is absolutely fantastic. So it doesn't quite look like that there's any final nail in the coffin. It doesn't quite look like that Impact Wrestling is going out of business anytime soon. And it doesn't quite appear that quote unquote nobody knows what Impact Wrestling is because a lot of people do. So that's that's great news for Impact Wrestling. Great news, great, great news for Impact Wrestling. And it's um it's only gonna get better from here. Only gonna get better from here for Impact Wrestling. And um I myself and I'm sure everybody listening is very excited what the future holds for Impact Wrestling. Alright, so where's Jackson Stone? The the Shogun Suplex. Where is he? A few months a few months ago, he he won uh, the gut check contest, and uh, he he was on my show. He has a three year contract, but where where is he? Where's Jackson Stone? How come we haven't seen him? How come we haven't seen him yet? I know they brought in a lot of uh, we, we, they. He, I'm sure uh, the Good Brothers and EC3 and Heath and all the new talent that came in, you know, you know, kind of. Uh, put a little delay on Jackson Stone, but they, they, they need to bring Jackson Stone in. That's I'm, I'm going to make this short and sweet. They need to bring Jackson Stone in. He is a talented, talented, young, terrific wrestler who deserves his opportunity. He, he won his opportunity. Now he deserves the chance to show us what he can do with that opportunity. And I know he can be a fantastic addition to Impact Wrestling. There's a, there's actually a, um, a uh, on social media there's a uh, post that they said uh, that the impact wrestling posted asking who's the next opponent for chris bay and i say i say i actually it's it's more along the lines of who would you like to see challenge chris bay for the exhibition title i got two names in mind i got two names in mind jackson stone of course i will want jackson stone to to challenge and also aiden prince Actually, I got three names: Rohit Raju. So Jackson Stone, Aiden Prince, Rohit Raju. Now those uh, I would like, like to see those three challenge for Chris Bay. And, and actually, I want to I want to talk about. Um, uh, actually, before I talk about that, one more time, it's time to bring in Jackson Stone. Jackson Stone, as I said, fantastic talent, and uh, it's time to bring him in. And uh, I put him put him in a program, put him in a little field with Chris Bay for that title uh, right off the bat, and I think it would be absolutely fantastic. Uh, but I, I just mentioned the Chris Bay post on Impact Wrestling, and I, I want to mention that uh, because I, I feel that might have been a little bit of a mistake to to post that to post um, who do you feel should challenge Chris Bay for the X Division title. And the reason why I say that is because I was just speaking about the Eddie Edwards um, promise to defend his Impact title every week. So to create a little bit of buzz for that, I think that post should have been who do you think should challenge Eddie Edwards? Not Chris Bay, but Eddie Edwards for the for the Impact Wrestling World Heavyweight Champion. Create a little buzz, get a little buzz going on that. Uh, but and I, I went back, I didn't see any post on the uh, in that nature of all. They didn't um, ask the fans who they would like Eddie Edwards to uh, defend the title against. Uh, but they went with Chris Bay. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. But I think they should have gone with. Um, or at least if, if they're going to do the Chris Bay, at least put a, a post up asking who people think should challenge Eddie Edwards for the for the Impact Wrestling World Championship. Especially since he says he's going to defend it every week. Uh, so um, just, want to, uh, just want to mention that. So let's move on. Explosion. Explosion uh, was on. I was watching Explosion uh, this morning. And uh, the main event, not, not the main event, but the one... one fresh new match was Madman Fulton against a newcomer named Jonathan David. Now, it was a squash match. It was a squash match. Madman Fulton ran right over Jonathan David. And and by the way, I just want to say Josh Matthews did a terrible job. Terrible job announcing. Uh, but I'm just going to leave. I'm, just, I'm not going to 
go further into that. I just he did a really bad job. But I really like this match. It was a squash match, but the reason why I liked it is because we saw a new face. We saw a new face. We saw uh, Jonathan David. I, I, I never saw this Jonathan David before in my life. I didn't know who it was, but I was intrigued because it was a new face. It was a wrestler that I'm not familiar with. So this is what, this is what Explosion should be doing. This is what Explosion needs to do. Give us one fresh match and one new talent match. Every week, you know, I'm not interested in watching Dave Penzer speak to Rhino because that was that was the very next segment. I'm not interested. It was a it wasn't a very it wasn't an interesting conversation. Not interested in that. Give us the one fresh match and give us one or two new talent matches. Now, I I I don't want to be beating a dead horse. I know I spoke about I spoke about this before, but you know, you have an extra hour of content. You know, don't show it a classic match. You know, Impact Plus is where wrestle not wrestlers where fans can go and watch their their classic matches. Explosion, give us one fresh match and one or two new talent matches or showcase matches from other promotions like like Ethan Page promotion. Alpha One Wrestling is up here. Showcase showcase an Alpha One match or, um, you know, they have they have I can't think of any promotion right now, they, but they have uh, they have partner promotions all over the United States. And um, they should, you know, show um, so f- show some fresh talent, show some fresh matches, you know, do some stuff, do do some fresh stuff, you know, change change up explosion, make it exciting to watch. I mean, like I'll just watch the match and then that's it. I won't ma- I won't watch anything else on explosion. I'll just watch the one fresh match, or the one new match, and I won't watch anything else. I'll turn it off after that. But you know, I I'm, I'm they need to change the format on explosion and and. I can I can only say it so many times, right? I can only say it so many times. They they need to change the format of, of Explosion and just just make it all all matches. Give us three three matches throughout Explosion, and I'm sure you'll see a ratings increase. I'm sure a lot more people will be interested in watching Explosion. All right, Dave Meltzer, Dave Meltzer. Uh, he, let me pull let me pull up. Um, there we go. Okay, so Dave Meltzer, he uh, he rated. Slammiversary matches. You know he has his five star rating. You know, you know, the, the, it seems like the five star ratings are are basically reserved just for AEW. And um, you know, uh, to his credit, New Japan Pro Wrestling will get um, will get a high ratings. But it's the, his 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 high star ratings seem to be reserved for New Japan Pro Wrestling, WWE, NXT, and um, New Japan Pro Wrestling because Jordan Grace versus Diano Prazo, and I touched upon this on the last podcast. That was a fantastic match. That was a fantastic match. Absolutely loved the match. Everyone that watched the match, you know, spoke highly of it, and um, he gave it two point seven five stars. Now it, it's his star ratings is one is the worst, five is I'm sorry, zero is the worst, five is the is the highest. Uh, he actually gave a, a Kenny Omega uh, and uh, Adam Page versus Young Buck match in in AEW. He gave it six stars. He gave it six stars. Ooh, you know, the Young Bucks, you know, they they probably use the, they 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 the Young Bucks have them move the Meltzer driver, so they probably use it more than once. So he's like, okay, they use it more than once. I'll give them six stars. Uh, but but back to Jordan Grace and and Diona Perazzo. Two point five stars. What match was he watching? I, you know, personally, I don't even think he watched Slammiversary. I don't think he watched Slammiversary. I think he's probably just read a review, and I uh, said, all right, two point seven five. You know, cause it's it, there's no way that that match, that match deserved at least four stars in my opinion. That was a terrific, terrific match between two top athletes. And Willie Mack versus Chris Bay, he gave two point seven five stars. And don't say, well, he doesn't like all the flippy stuff. He doesn't like all the flippy stuff. But you know, the young bucks get a a match with the young bucks gets six stars. So don't tell me he doesn't like the flippy stuff. So because he apparently loves the flippy stuff. Uh, but but this match was also a very 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 good match. No way that it should have been given two point seven five stars. Not by by Dave. This this is proving that I personally, like I said, I don't think he watched. I don't think he watched Slamiversary because he gave he gave the the women's gauntlet match. He gave it zero stars. He gave it zero stars. You know you could say yes the comedy stuff with the comedy stuff that they had in there. With Johnny Bravo was was okay. It was a little unnecessary, but he gave it zero stars. It, it wasn't a zero star match. It's just it's just ridiculous. It is. Dave Meltzer is. 
he, I, I'm like I said, I, I don't. Just gets me so irritated that someone like Dave Meltzer, who who claims to be who claims to be so respected in in the pro wrestling business, is is obviously showing bias here against Impact Wrestling. Obviously showing bias here against Impact Wrestling, and it's it's pathetic. It's pathetic. Uh, I mean, you know, the North versus Ken Shamrock and Sammy Callahan got three stars. Uh, Moose versus Tommy Dreamer got one point five stars. Okay, it wasn't that wasn't the best match. I don't know if it should have been that low, but but it wasn't that wasn't the best match. You know, that uh, Eddie Edwards versus Trey was ace. Also, Eric Young was Rich Swan. Okay, he gave three point seven five stars. Uh, again, like I said, I I don't think he watched all the matches. I don't think he watched all the matches, and uh, I I think his biased bias towards towards Impact Wrestling is is apparent here. I mean, for, I mean for goodness sake, the eye for the eye match, where. Between Seth Rollins and Rey Mysterio, where where Rey Mysterio got his eye ripped out of his head, you know, Dave Meltzer gave that match four stars, four stars he gave it. So yeah, so so there's 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 apparent the, the there's definitely a bias there's definitely apparent bias on on the on the part of Dave Meltzer on on how he's given out these star ratings. Uh, so so I, I just want to point that out. I just want to point that out. Now, what is it time for? What is it time for? I think it's time for me to discuss a dumb comment. What do you think, guys? Let, let's let's <laughs> let's discuss a dumb comment. And um, it, it started with a one word. It was a, this one was a one word dumb comment. One word dumb comment. And it, but it escalated into more. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna read a couple of comments from this one guy who was on on, on Facebook, and it, it was into in response to last Friday's Impact Wrestling post. Where they uh, where they said Eddie Edwards, uh, the new Impact Wrestling World Champion, and a picture of him holding the Impact Wrestling World Title. So one guy decided that he's going to post who, LOL. <laughs> so so he, right off the bat he's starting he's going that route with with who like who is that? Now first of all, if you don't know who Eddie Edwards is, you're not a professional wrestling fan. And that's all. That's all I can say about that. If you don't know who Eddie Edwards is, you're not a professional wrestling fan. So a lot of people responded to him, uh, and I did as well. But I, I, I did as we got a little later on. But a lot of people responded to him, and um, and he comes back uh, by saying that you know, a lot of people are calling out you know, WWE and everything. So he responds by saying, "I just like real promotions, not the one that died five years ago." You know, and and first of first first of all, let me let me just say when he saw that first comment come in for for his um, post, I bet you he got real excited because now he's able to finally engage in conversation with an actual person. Uh, so uh, what you know, of course it's online, but he's he's ap- he's 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 get ready to engage to talk. He's get ready to engage in conversation with someone. So it got him real excited uh, to. To, to get going on this uh, so he said I just like real promotions not the one that died five years ago yeah because because impact wrestling clearly died five years ago right so the, <laughs> it doesn't exist anymore you know that's why the impact lounge you know we're, we're doing this you know we're, we're, we're doing well with the impact lounge um, impact wrestling uh, slamversary their their social media records were just smashed um, it's, it's not bad that's not bad for a company that died five years ago so um, yeah so so people you know they they went after him on that and um and so 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 again someone called him uh someone got into wwe and and so this guy he comes back and he says you know uh, i just i don't think impact wrestling is like it used to be they don't have stars like adam cole aj styles daniel bryan and seth rollins and i could keep going if you like you know, and and then someone brought in well, someone brought up that they just brought in a lot of uh, new talent. You know, EC3, the Good Brothers, and and um, Heath Slater, and um, Motor City Machine Guns. So he responds, and I'll read his I'll read his uh, whole comment. It said literally two guys from Japan who couldn't make it in the big time is not a good example. Yeah, yeah, the good the good brothers couldn't make it in the big time because they were they they were they were given a fair opportunity in the WWE, right? Yeah, okay. And so then he, he goes on, um, try again, man. They may have been in Ring of Honor, but when it came to the big time and getting noticed, Daniel Bryan, Seth Rollins, Adam Cole all stepped up in the WWE. You guys are just sour. And this is the best line. This is the best line. You guys are just sour. <laughs> 
<laughs> you guys are just sour because AJ Styles left the company that he made famous. Yeah, okay. So let's let let's address let's address uh, that last line. Let's address that last line because I don't know about anybody else. I don't know about anybody else, but since 2013, since AJ Styles left, I've been in an unbreakable funk. I've been in just an unbreakable fit of rage. You know, I've been so upset since 2013, ever since AJ Styles left Impact Wrestling. And it's just, I it's created issues at work. It's created issues at home. Um, my family, they don't even talk to me anymore. Uh, my friends, I lost all my friends because I alienated them. Uh, all because AJ Styles left Impact Wrestling or left TNA seven years ago. I just, I just... I just can't get over it. You see, see how dumb that sounds. See how stupid that sounds. Yeah, everyone, everyone, all Impact Wrestling fans are still just absolutely sour that AJ Styles left Impact Wrestling seven years ago. You know, you know when I'll tell you. You know when I, you know when I got over AJ Styles leaving Impact Wrestling, the minute AJ Styles announced that he's leaving Impact Wrestling, that that's when I got over it. Okay, the minute he announced that he's leaving Impact Wrestling, that's when I got over it, thinking, well, they'll just bring in new talent because that's what promotions do, and that's what they did. And and he's he's saying that the Good Brothers they came to the big time. First of all, the WWE is not the big time. Okay, when you want to think about the big time, you want to think about promotions that matter. Well, let's let's talk about the big time for 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 um for a moment. So the big time. There and he mentioned Seth Rollins being in the big time. And Seth Rollins stepped it up in the big time. So, so in the big time. So, I guess in the big time, having eye for an eye matches are are part of being in the big time. Now, Seth Rollins versus Rey Mysterio, in which um, the winner had to rip their opponent's eye out of its socket. So, so that's the big time. So that that's I guess that's what uh, people want to see. No, uh, you you can't be a, a big time promotion unless you have a match in 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 which uh, um, the stipulation is you have to rip a body part out of your opponent. So why don't we why don't why don't Impact Wrestling maybe Impact Wrestling could go that route, maybe Impact Wrestling could go that route. Let's see. So so Eric Young versus versus uh, Eddie Edwards. Maybe we could have you know the winner needs to remove um, needs to, needs to remove. Uh, the tongue. They need to extract the tongue from from their opponent. So the winner must cut the tongue out of its their opponent's head. So we could go that way, or or we could we could go uh, EC3 versus Moose and in a uh, gold bladder removal match. So the the winner of the match must perform an operation in the middle of the ring in which they remove the gold bladder from their opponent. So maybe we could go that route. Maybe we can have a uh, gold bladder removal match match between uh, EC3 and Moose. Maybe then, maybe then uh, some of these people will will consider Impact Wrestling uh, being the quote unquote big time. You know, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. Uh, you think the WWE is the big time, but they're not. They don't know how to use a lot of the wrestlers. I mean, how how many times they're gonna you know lose faith in their new talent and. Um, such as uh, like EC3 and uh, guys like uh, Eric Young or uh, guys like uh, Brian Myers uh, how th- or, or Heath Slater. Uh, how many times are they going to lose faith in, in those guys and say, you know what, why don't we just bring, why don't we just bring The Undertaker against Goldberg and we'll, we'll, we'll main event that match. Let's bring back Goldberg. Uh, we'll bring, oh, oh man, oh, EC3. No, we're not going to use him. Let's, uh, let's give The Undertaker a call. What is he, like 62 now? Let, let's let's go that route. Uh, maybe maybe Shawn Michaels will come back. You know maybe the, maybe we could get maybe we could get him back. Triple H, you wanna you wanna put on the tights today? Um, uh, I don't think EC3 is working out. <laughs> you know that's 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 how it goes. That's how it goes. Eric Young said the that uh, the WWE is a broken system, and you know what? You know what? Eric Young is not a liar. Eric Young is not a liar. And on that note, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me today. My name is Lewis Carlin. This has been Shooting Up North. You can hear us, as always, on the Impact Lounge. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.